live, but it takes a little bit of time, so I'll just give it a few seconds to make sure we are live, and then we can start. Did I test, test it all sharing my screen or no? Um, yeah, but um, right now I think uh, we are live with this, so we'll, we'll do the screen sharing afterwards. Yeah. It's coming quickly. Okay. Uh, Good uh, morning, good evening, good Live, afternoon, good night, uh, anyone. Thank you for um, sure. joining uh, this uh, live webinar, the first live webinar. I'm Reza Rad, and uh, here is uh, Reed Haven, uh, our first guest. Uh, 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 speaking at our live events. I'm not that much experienced in live events, so I hope this goes well, uh, uh, building up experience. And thank you, Reed, for being the first presenter. Hey, Reed. Good afternoon. Hey, Reza, how's it going today? Or this morning for you? Good, it's going very well. Uh, and uh, quite glad to have you uh, with us right now. Uh, what is... Uh, most exciting for you in the uh, MBAS uh, announcements? I mean, just the, you know, everybody is saying, and I'll continue to say it, uh, just the, the new composite models that are coming out as far as being able to, uh, you know, to, to, to merge the worlds of, of import and, and existing tabular, whether or not that's Power BI data sets um, on-prem or Azure analysis services is like, that's kind of like one of those mic drop game over scenarios of there isn't a single scenario left of any kind of model configuration or unioning or you know com combining of, of models that really now will exist that can't be done um, in, in Power BI. So like that that was kind of just a um, a very welcome announcement to finally have that you know see see um, a, a public release at least of the the timeline for that. Um, my personal favorite like small little update is really the that like drag and drop lasso just to multi select. It, it's such a, a minor change, really, as far as like a feature to add, but it just makes development so much easier, especially when you're grouping in visuals and moving things around on the page, rather than having to use that selection pane. Yeah, definitely. Especially like the uh, like these little things are always things that helps people a lot, right? I mean, something yep. like composite model on top of uh, live um, connection is definitely great, but. Uh, for implementing such, uh, such thing, Power BI teams spend a lot of time. But something like a lasso or grouping visuals, these are like easy things to implement, but immense value for uh, for the users. Right. Okay. I'm sure there's there's one in kind of your world of Power Query that I'm I'm sure you yeah. appreciate, which is the there's now a notification um, icon next to any query step that has a note um, in the description. So. You don't have to like. I used to have to rename the query steps to indicate like there was there was notes in there, and now it's just it's automatically shows up. So that's really convenient too for those little like, like tooltip notes. Yes, and that little like key column indication that is really interesting. That you uh, can yes. yeah, you can have like a key column in a table, which like from uh, for us coming from data warehouse concept, we always have that key column even if it's not marked as a key. But for many others, this might not bring that concept. Now, bringing that key column uh, brings a lot of value, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. I, I know there's there's some ways to force Power Query in the backend to create those key columns by like sorting or doing other things that indexes it for you. Um, but like to have an actual button that says "mark as key" is is really paramount to, especially for like um, blob storage or flat file merges or anything else, it will help with optimization of much faster joins between those in Power Query, which is certainly a headache for some people. Correct, right. Nice, okay, so um, let's uh, start the presentation and um, we'll, uh, if anyone have any questions, feel free to put your questions in the chat box. We'll have like probably a stop or two uh, to go through some of those questions, but at the end we will definitely go through your questions. So um, feel free to put your questions over there. And uh, now to you, Reed, for sure. sharing your slide. Yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen. Taking a second with everything that's running on my computer. All right, so 
Um, yeah, let me just start with uh, just kind of a, a conversation of what we'll be talking about for the next, you know, 35, 40 minutes, um, and just a bit of a background on me for those of you uh, tuning in who uh, maybe don't know uh, too much about what I do. So uh, the topic itself uh, will be um, a, a presentation that I really like to do on unlocking visualizations and features in Power BI. So this is kind of um, like a great uh, collection of uh, really cool um, techniques, tricks, um, some, I would say, even like you know, unique layerings of just really uh, cool ways to use Power BI that are, you know, um, you know, that move beyond the realm of just out of the box solutions um, and uh, really unique ways to put a spin on visualizations and other stuff. Uh, just as a little background on me, though. So um, similar to Reza, I am, you know, been an MVP now for a few years and I do a lot of work in Power BI. My specialization is more in visualization and design. I found that there's a lot of people who do modeling. Um, I've feel like at least from my perspective, there's less that do, uh, that focus on aesthetics um, and storytelling. So that's just been an area that uh, has been very successful for me to lean on. So you know, that ended up uh, getting me the nickname of the VizWiz a few years back from a couple of other colleagues. Uh, but that's a lot of the work that I do. And I do the entire gamut of Power BI, but primarily it's the visualization and design is where, where people usually find me from, like with my YouTube channel and stuff. Um, but uh, you know, not too much just to go into um, a list of all the things about me. Uh, let's actually talk about the topic itself. So uh, there will be two primary sections in here that we're going to discuss. Um, given the time limit that we have of about 40 minutes, more than likely we will get through this first section over on the left of native visualizations and features. Uh, that will cover a lot of really cool techniques. Uh, the great thing about this talk is it's very modular. So I can scale this up to easily 90 minutes and I can scale this down to 30 minutes if I need to. Um, the benefit for you, any of you tuning in, um, is that all of um, most of these in here, with the exception of one, I do have um, supplemental material I can provide at the end for links and other things, so you can um, still see some of the techniques for these things, even if you didn't see it in this presentation. So uh, lots of good resources for you that I will um, throw up at the end when I have a link of lists and uh, other resources for you to go check out. Um, but overall, you know, just short introduction. Most of this is going to be demo, so I want to hop into Power BI and uh, get started with some of that. All right, and what I'll mention too with the uh, with each of these sections, what I'll do is I will talk about um, like a topic, and then I usually leave about one to three minutes of space uh, for questions at the end of that. So as I'm walking through this stuff, I want to go ahead and leave those uh, spots open for questions. Um, if the the presentation is normally longer, I usually do try to see if people can guess how I uh, how I created one of these techniques. But for sake of time and wanting to cover more, I'll go ahead and just run through it myself. Um, so the first technique that I have here um, is essentially some conditional formatting that's actually being applied to this line visual. Uh, more specifically, it's these little dots that you see right here that are on the top of all these lines at each of the data points. Now, that's not something you can do natively in Power BI. Um, and by that, I mean, like, if I actually were to select this and come over to the visualizations pane and go to my format painter and look at my data colors, there's no act, there's no little symbol here or ellipses that says you know I have an option to conditionally format it. Yet that conditional formatting is still there. So um, this I would describe as kind of a happy little accident that happened. Uh, you know Power BI makes it very easy to swap between visuals and you know copy and reuse formatting etc. So I had started with a stacked column visual in Power BI. There is conditional formatting. Um, with the fact that you know there's a little f of x symbol here that actually allows me to apply some DAX logic, some color formatting, you know, and basically set you know the conditions to have those colors show up on the page. See if that actually pops up or not. There we go. Yeah, so standard conditional formatting that's included in here onto the page, um, and then I need business requirements changed. They actually wanted a line chart for this scenario, and when I switched it. I noticed that I did not any longer have an option to configure it, but the conditional formatting was kept and included as a dot on the uh, on the visual itself. And I actually went back and checked with Microsoft. Uh, I wanted to confirm before developing this to production, uh, is this a glitch that you're going to fix at some point, or are you going to keep this? And um, I think from their perspective, it was unintentional to, to have left in the report, but they have no, um, they're not going to remove this at any point. It's been in there for a few years now, and that's something safe to deploy. Um, that's one thing I also check with a lot of these techniques is, um, sure, some of them might seem kind of like a hack, but I will also make sure if it is quote unquote a hack that it's not going to get fixed at any point because you you know the last thing you want is to deploy any kind of um, visual or report to a uh, production environment to have something break and that feature get removed and then your client's upset because you included a feature that is now no longer available in the tool set and that looks both bad on the consultant and the tool uh, Power BI in this case itself. 
Um, so like that's kind of the the first um, you know unique and kind of almost you know hidden technique essentially for Power BI. Uh, the other one that I want to bring up in here just real quickly is the idea of visual header tooltips and some workarounds to allow for more text to go into there. Now, um, if you're not aware, visual header tooltips are these you know little uh, pop-ups you can have with a little question mark icon that allows you to add some kind of text that helps guide the user on what is being shown on the visualization itself. Um, and the default with these normally, if I scroll down here, get rid of that, just say none. You have up to 250 characters that can be included in standard text. You can't really format it, not really much else. And you know, there's a, there's a character limit. That is all the text you can, can include in there. But there also are times where maybe you want to have more text than that, or you want to italicize it or bold it or do other things that just requires more space or other visuals. So you can instead create a report tooltip page, assign that in here. The page is already created in my report. And in this example, all I did is create a report tooltip page. I put a text box in there. I you know, colored it the same background color to make it look like the, the, the standard um, visual header tooltip. But now you know, I have uh, a lot more room uh, to do any formatting. I can also bold, um, italicize, underline. So there's a lot of other things that I can do. And I just have random text generator thrown into here. But uh, it gives you uh, basically now an entire sandbox of a tiny report page to then add to that, the, the top of that visual header. So um, another, you know, again, like work around to a limit where there are other ways to, um, to add features or character length when that's something that you're hitting a wall against for any of those designs for the report uh, tooltips or visual header tooltips, sorry. All right. So, you know, that's essentially the end of uh, this, this first example that I want to show. And I'm going to have a lot of other cool stuff to go to. Um, but this is that point where I want to just pause for about a minute or two, see if there's any questions in that uh, comment thread uh, before moving on to the next topic. So, uh, Reza, uh, anything um, popping up? Uh, so there was only uh, one question about uh, like using Power BI as a write back tool. I guess that was not anything about uh, what you presented so far already, which I answered it. Uh, Power BI cannot be used for a write back. Um, I mean, it's not a tool for a write back, but you can do it with the Power App Visual. Do you want to also explain about that a little bit? Yep, yeah, and uh, you know, if you want more information, you're welcome to email Reza or myself, um, any of the contact that's provided at the end. Um, but yeah, Re Reza's essentially right. There's not that much write back features available for Power BI. There are a few custom visuals and Power Apps that do it, but it's not designed out of the box in any way to be write back. Great. Um, but I'll, I'll you know, kind of just leave it at that. Yeah, we got right, me... two more questions coming if you have time. Oh, sure. or... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, if that's not the only one, then absolutely. So then from Germany asked, do you have in the la um, and do you have in the last time the problem with the RAM workload with Power BI desktop? I use so much RAM uh, processor mm, because of it, so it is I slow. I guess it is a performance these, problem. Uh, I think these are great questions to have. Happy to ask uh, to answer those offline in emails or LinkedIn messages. Uh, if we can try to keep the questions related to the things that are going on to the pay uh, on as part of the the demonstration, that will uh, be most helpful. Not, yeah, not not too resident, just to the the audience itself. Yep. Definitely, great, thank you. Uh, Christian's question, I guess it's related. Uh, uh, he says that I saw most, if not all of your visual, that visual header has a darker color. Is there a reason for that? Um, other than just aesthetics, not really. You know, I, I often go for kind of like a blue scheme. So, you know, I, I just colored this kind of a, a dark blue color based off of the classroom theme that's included in Power BI. Uh, I will say that it, it got improved when they released all of those new themes previously in Power BI uh, in uh, or, you know mid fall last year. Um, the, the original default color of a really light gray title um, I found was extremely hard to read for a lot of people. So that I definitely didn't prefer, but they've since increased the font size and made the default a dark color. So as long as it's readable, I, you know it's less important of what the color is. Is, is you know you just want to make sure it's clear and readable for your uh, um, users and consumers of the report. Awesome, sounds great. Um, no more questions, so go ahead, please, your pre presentation. Perfect, yeah, so number two is, and um, Reza, just uh, as a quick uh, mention to you, because I turned off my taskbar, just give me a 10 and a five minute mark when we'll still have 15 minutes left of the hour. Perfect. Yeah, so when there's 20 minutes left and then 15, or sorry, uh, 
30 and 25. So that basically when I have 10 minutes left and five minutes left, that way we leave 15 open for um, general Q&A for people. Yep, sure. Cool. All right, so um, next one. Um, and with a lot of these two, the, the things that I love about both development and then I think uh, both teaching and training, which I do uh, quite a lot of as well, is I'll occasionally learn something from um, you know, somebody else commenting on something or just from an environment perspective of, uh, you know, I, I see a cool visual somewhere. And this came up actually through doing some development uh, for my website where I actually was doing some Google Analytics uh, report creation off of the, you know, just the company website that I have. And I saw this visual on their webpage. It was a heat map that had uh, the data by day of the week and then hour of the day. So you can kind of see a clustering of where, you know, day and um, day and time, where are people most often visiting, you know, in this case for website traffic, but you know, where's most of the data collecting? And I really liked that visual. I spent a bit of time trying to figure out um, if there's some custom visuals for this, for this, and there are. Um, there are a few heat map custom visuals, but you know, the, the double-edged sort of the custom visuals is they might service a need, but they also will typically have less features than native visuals. They might not be as optimized, so they will maybe render a little bit slower. So I use them if I have to, but I will still try to figure out if I can do this with a native visual. Um, and that's what I did with a matrix table, actually, in Power BI. So um, a little bit of uh, formatting magic on this and some conditional formatting allowed me to create the table heat map. Um, essentially, each of the cells here, I just added a bit of padding and, uh, and width and everything to make them a bit more like a rectangle, so they actually stood out. And that ended up uh, achieving the effect that I needed for the grid. Um, and the trick, honestly, comes in with the conditional formatting to apply. So with a lot of things in Power BI, I, I kind of started you know, years back at this point with the mindset the, you could only like apply one of something to any specific thing. And for a while, I kind of thought that for conditional formatting, like I could apply background color or I could apply font color. I could create a data bar on there, but I really didn't think of what would happen if I could layer them together. So, you know, let me show you what I mean as far as that concept goes. This is the table without any conditional formatting applied. Like sure it works, but obviously looking at the numbers is not giving us an instant insight into where the clustering is occurring. We need colors to help us do that. So I can start the process by going to background color. And I'll give it a second to pop up and um, I'll go ahead and just do like a, let's do like a light blue to a dark blue. There we go. Two extremes, filled it in. Now that's step one, I'm starting to see that, but to me, this is still very noisy. The point of this visual isn't to show exact values in any of these quadrants here. Uh, I would rather just see the color and then we still have a tooltip available if we wanted to see the exact numbers. So. There is no option in the format painter to say, turn off data labels. There is no data label section here. We can still do that, but it's again, kind of um, a, a bit of clever formatting to get this. So um, what you can do is you can actually apply for any single metric um, in the value section in here, you can apply more than one conditional format. In theory, you could apply all four, though I would not really recommend having background font, data bars and icons all showing at the same time. But background and font color, can have the exact same logic. It's just applying it to the background and to the font. So if I apply a font color, exact same logic, light and dark. The text and the background are colored the same, so they disappear into each other. The, the, the number is still there and it's still, still being shown, but it's completely invisible because the colors will always completely match because they follow the exact same business logic. So if you do this, then you essentially turn off data labels and create that heat map that um, I was essentially aiming towards um, building in here. So, um, and I think this is a great example to also show the really cool things you can do with a matrix table. Um, there's a lot of unique ways to use this. I've seen people use it to create links and um, like tons of other visuals that kind of don't look like a standard table by the time you're, you're finishing designing it. Um, and arguably it has, uh, not even arguably, it does have the highest number of customizable options of any visual in Power BI. So there's a lot of ways to tweak it to, to fit a very specific look and need, you know, similar to a pivot table. Um, so I would recommend, um, you know, keeping an open mind when you when you think of a matrix table. It can do a lot more than just be a table. There's many ways to use it as a visual itself. Um, this one's pretty straightforward, but I really just like the technique itself of heat map uh, heat mapping with the matrix table. Um, but and and again, before I move on to you know topic number three, I'll leave you a couple minutes of space for anybody that has a question um, on anything I just covered. Okay, um, we got a, uh, like uh, one question mainly, which is like about dynamic column names. Do you know when that would be available in Power BI? It's a feature I would love to have. 
someday. Um, there was no confirmed conversations or anything else um, leading to that at the, at the moment. So it's a it's a great idea. It's on Power BI Ideas. I would recommend voting for that if you haven't. Um, that's going to be something that you know I can't imagine happening anytime in the near if at all. But uh, you know, Microsoft always checks the ideas for them. So if you if enough people get votes in there, they'll at least consider it and then figure out how, how you know how much time it'll take to make. But I can imagine some, um, a column rege regenerating on a table uh, every time you click a slicer is a lot of calculating power. So that's not a, not necessarily an easy feat to do. Yes. Yep. Right. Uh, one other thing, it's not more question, more of a question. It's uh, um, Abby saying that huge fan of your uh, work creating a slicer pop out window with a bookmark button in Power BI. Um, I want to say yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for the compliment. That is a great feature. Um, I have, I still use it occasionally. If somebody has a really specific kind of custom layout and design that they have planned for a bookmark window, yes, you can still have the pop up on the left. Um, and I, you know that video is still super popular. However, as far as performance goes, like I have been leaning more and more on uh, the filters pane because it it is for for page load time significantly faster. So if your if your um, clients aren't picky and you know, are, are happy just with the built-in one, I would encourage you to start using that more. And if, if they're very specific on layout design, color formatting, order, uh, you know, all, all sorts of like tweaks to, to the design, then yes, there are still uses for that pop-out window. But this is a lot simpler to build. So you know, pro and con between the two and you know, just weigh your options appropriately when considering those. Great. And um, a comment from Christian that says that using table for heat map is uh, fantastic. Uh, I have used it with some background changes and phone changes, but heat map looks really interesting. So I think you are good to go. Oh, perfect. All right. Another client scenario where I, uh, um, actually a pretty common one. So, and I'm sure a few of you have asked for this before is the idea that you want a stacked column chart, but you would also want a grand total at the top of it. So this is a very, um, yeah, I'd say a relatively common request that I've gotten from at least four to five clients, and I needed to figure out how to make this in Power BI. Because the standard um, combo column chart, or stack column chart, if you were just to turn on data labels, what you get, unfortunately, is just subtotals. There's no data label grand total option that just triggers it. It only will show you the subtotals, and like that's not what the customer wanted. Um, so I kind of had a version one of this a few years ago where I actually layered two visuals together very cleverly um, and you know had a, a, the column total showing at the top. Um, and then it happened to be a, a presentation, might have been in Portland, I forget where, where somebody actually mentioned to me you could use a combo chart for this. Blew, uh, um, blew my previous method out of the water was, uh, and was significantly more powerful. It's half the number of visuals required. So I want, I want to walk you through you know, how to do that essentially. Um, so we have the visual here. Um, if we actually just convert this first to a line and stack column chart, that converts it. And what we do, again, there's got to be some clever formatting in there. So I'm going to take my page views that I have over here, I'm going to drop it into my line values. That's step one. There we go. We're going to get a line that's going to show up here. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and go over and format this a bit. Um, the first thing that kind of was that, like, it seems, it still seems like a glitch to me because I don't think you should do this logically, but if you go to shapes, I can take my stroke width, which is the width of the line. Like to me as a, as a programmer, I would expect width is one or greater. Like why would you be able to drop the width down to zero? It makes the line invisible and it's just one of those like, huh, it seems like, like it's an array, like it should start at one. Um, but it's, you know, somehow you're allowed to put it down to zero and that was just, I would have never thought about it because I would have never thought you could actually do this. So you could make the line invisible and now, with that being applied, you can turn on data labels. And what you can do, make sure you go down. You want to customize the series, because there's a few things that we need to tweak. For one, these are not all sitting at the top yet. Like, see, notice that some of these are kind of below that. That's not, um, it's not super obvious for me yet. So I'm going to go ahead and customize series. And there's actually a lot of these we want to turn off. Notice that I have the legend down here at the bottom, plus my second line. I actually want to turn it off for all of these except for page views. And here's the reason why. If I use the focus mode, there you go. All of my labels are actually still there. It's just they didn't have room to fit into the column when the table was that, uh, when the visual was a smaller size. So to prevent this kind of noise from showing up, we want to make sure that these get all turned off. Well, my computer's running a little slow just because of all the sharing. So 
I'm just going to say I'm going to turn off the data label for Monday through Sunday. The only thing you wanted to have it left on is page view. Everything else should be disabled. Um, that prevents this kind of noise, as I just mentioned, when your visual gets too big or you focus mode it. So now I'm going to co uh, customize the page views option itself. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say position. It's going to be above. There we go. Now starting to show up above them a little bit better. I also want to turn off show background. So now we're getting that really clean little stack on top of all of these for that data label. A um, couple of other things I'll mention just to really make it clear that that's a grand total. So for one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shapes. If you want to have an identifying marker for these, you can turn on show marker. Step one and come over here. And instead of line value, have the page view name, rename this to grand total. So now you have a data label that says that purple dot is grand total, that purple dot is assigned here. I typically don't have this on. I think it's obvious enough when the, the values at the top it says, you know, 572, and you can tell that that's about the, the, the height of the axis over there. That's obvious uh, enough for me, but this at least has a little bit of extra helper, um, you know, uh, guidelines and indicators you can include if somebody really wants a clear connection between a label and the um, the value there at the top of the, the visual itself. All right, I'll leave this spot now open for some questions if anybody has any. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, we got a few questions. I answered them shortly, but you can answer them, I, I guess, much better. Um, so one question is about, uh, is, um, is there a way to create a menu style grid navigation without using buttons? Menu style grid navigation. So like an array, like a, just a, mm. an array of buttons to click. Yeah. I mean, there is the, um, with the built-in slicer, you know, you do have that option to turn on list and then you turn it on from um, vertical to horizontal. And if it's responsive is on, you get, you know, those little kind of like card buttons to click on. That's that's a native one. And then, you know, I'm sure you know this, Reza, too. The, uh, the, the chiclet slicer is probably the most common. Um, slicer to get like the grid of buttons to select. And that one includes visual images if you actually wanted to include it on each button too. Yeah, correct. Or, or even let's say a table of images, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, I mean, and technically yeah. a matrix table, you know, with, with the values in there can also be a slicer because any cell you select is going to cross filter the two quadrants of that. Yep, exactly. Uh, another question is that uh, then asked from Germany, uh, what is the best way we can implement corporate design, uh, let's say, like factors across all Power BI file? Is it a JSON file create, uh, need to be created? I guess the question is about themes. I'll, um, I'll, I'll let that one be taken offline. Um, I, again, it's not, not uh, directly related to anything we're, we're covering right now. So um, right. we're okay. both, either of us are happy to answer that, but um, shoot us an email or a link into that one. Okay, that looks good. And another question from Ferdinand was that, is there a visual that can show both stacked and clustered column in one? Uh, that's a great question, yes. Um, there is a way to make it. It is not mm. a visual that's native, but the Charticulator um, creator that uh, Microsoft originally built, um, Mike Carlo over at PowerBI.tips kind of took it and um, and you know uh, embedded it in his website. So I would check out PowerBI.tips as a good link. There's a, a page there for this charticulator which lets you kind of drag and drop and has a user interface to build out a custom visual how you want it, and then it exports a custom visual file that you can then include in your report. So um, there's that comes with its own can of worms, of course, when you use any custom visual, uh, but that's the only way that I've um, really known of to do that. And there might be one in the, the custom visual store too, but the only one that I've personally played with has been with Charticulator. Yeah, that definitely is a good answer. Charticulator is a visual that you can use to build any charts, almost any charts you like, but uh, you need to know how to do it, which there are some it videos. It a couple hours to, to get used to the tool. Yeah, like it, it took me a little bit to figure out how to use it and, and how to you know navigate the all of its buttons and everything to make visuals. Yes, correct. Yeah, where you click, at what order you click and things like that. Um, do you still have time for another question or do you want to go? Sure, you can do it. Let's do one more. Yep. Okay, one more. So 
the question is line and column chart are present in Power BI. Is there any way to create line and bar chart? Uh, that's a great question. I You could probably can do it in her chick articulator typically lines are left to right i've never really other than like a violin chart i've never really seen a line that's horizontal or has had a need for that so i mm -hmm. it's possible in theory um but it's i'm wondering how confusing that visual would be to your end user and why you would need a um, a bar in line versus a column in line so you know yeah especially uh, because definitely line possible chart. in articulator but why yeah, Go ahead, Reza. yeah. Uh, I was saying that especially line chart makes, uh, I mean, have a meaning when it comes with a horizontal axis. Um, yeah. yeah, I haven't exactly. seen any line chart with a vertical axis. Probably there's a use case uh, for yeah. that. And line is almost universally like well over half the time is usually presented with with time or date, and that's you know the best, the correct way to to present that. Easiest to understand is is horizontally, um, you know, across time, left to right. Yep. Awesome. Uh, we have cool. a few more questions, but we'll keep it for the next slot. Perfect. Um, so this is actually one that I did recently. Um, the great thing about this talk is I um, it evolves constantly because it's my like my favorite techniques, and I do a video every week on my YouTube channel. So as new cool ones come in, I swap uh, various topics on this out. Um, this one is actually uh, not live yet. It's going to be on the pass um, newsletter that's coming out in May, and then I'll eventually have it on my YouTube channel. Um, but uh, this was a client request where they wanted three buttons here at the top. Let's see if these are locked. Here we go. Where they wanted to easily be able to select between day, uh, month, and year, and just have you know essentially the entire page change perspective. And um, the nice thing about bookmarks, and I don't think a lot of people know this, versus uh, you know like you can you can ch change filter selection, you can change visibility, and you can change um, page navigation. Um, but part of the the data category includes what level your excuse me what level your hierarchy is at so you can actually configure this to do that um, you can set your hierarchy and create a bookmark create your buttons at the top to navigate between them and you can give your users a very nice like clean experience to you know shift levels on a report page the one downside is you know you can't really sync these between pages so um, that's the one major limitation that I've noticed, but that's still a pretty small limitation for the benefit of not having to click let's say 10 different visuals or five different visuals and have to navigate each one of them down to a lower level one at a time. Um, so I'll just show you the the general concept of just making that bookmark and how to set that, um, and uh, you know then move on to the next one. But I, I really liked the you know the solution to this after being given a business requirement for it from a client. Open up my selection and my bookmarks pane. Here we are. So in this example, let's go ahead and just assume that I wanted to create. I'm gonna make it smaller. There we go. I want to create my month perspective. You know, I want to uh, want a bookmark action that will navigate everything that I have down to the month. So it's basically as easy as setting up these to go to the month level. There you go. And uh, the goal of this isn't as much of showing you kind of how I made the, the different buttons, because I do kind of have a selected and non-selected button. That's one way to kind of create a, like button effects that's really useful as well in Power BI. Um, these are all created up here. Um, for those interested in uh, on the button creation, um, just I am direct message me later on LinkedIn, and I'll set, shoot you a video that I have that walks through that. But I'm just going to go ahead and select these. An important thing with bookmarks is you want to make sure, um, almost universally, you want to have the, the visuals that you care about changing selected, and you don't want to have everything affected. So I'm selecting the visuals that I care about toggling, and then I care about these four charts. So one, two, three, four. So those are the four visuals that I care about changing the hierarchy of, and then like my button selection there at the top for you know toggling the different buttons up here. And right now, quarter is the actively selected one. At the month level, I want this button to look like an active selection. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off quarter selected, turn on quarter not selected. See, there's was my inactive one that was hidden. Turn off my month there, and turn off that one. So there you go. Now you know the page looks like they've navigated to the month level. So all these are selected. Again, I need to make sure that everything I have is highlighted, that um, you're going to see why in a second. Click Add Bookmark. Just call this Month Test. And there's a few little settings in here we want to change. First and foremost, this is the reason that I actively selected the visuals I cared about. Uh, anytime you make a bookmark, with very little exceptions, and there are some, but it's pretty rare, 
you would want to make sure that selected visuals is the thing that you check. That basically limits the container of things that it's going to change or you know set back to this state to only the visuals that I have currently actively selected in my selection pane. So this is a very important part of bookmark development. I love bookmarks. I will say that they're one of the most complicated things to build, especially when you have a page with a lot of layers um, in Power BI Desktop. So you need to be very careful when building them because it's easy to you know, have a visual not caught in the net of what you're trying to affect or not affect. So selected visuals. In this case, two things need to be checked. I need data to be checked because the, um, the data setting or the data capture is what captures my hierarchy level. And I also need display to be selected because that is going to change the display settings for these buttons you know, between those two. So I don't need current page because that determines whether or not it navigates back to this page or not. So I uncheck any, anything that's not necessary for the bookmark. It's just a mental reminder for me later of what's not being used. So uncheck that. And now like we can see if I toggle from quarter, that's at the quarter level. If I go back to month, that's at the month level. And the same process is done to switch it to day and down. Um, but the end goal is with this, minimizing mouse clicks for your end user, making it really clean and really easy to shift perspectives with a single click of a button. Um, I'm sure there'll be a few questions on this, but that's just the general concept. Uh, most of the complexity comes from, you know, just making sure you make the bookmark correctly. But um, I think a lot of people don't realize that bookmarks can link and um, and update the hierarchy levels, which is um, where this technique, uh, I think, really has a lot of power. I'm um, gonna open up for questions now. Uh, that was great. Some master tips about bookmark. We don't have any questions about bookmark section, but um, yeah, there was- broader ones? Yep. I was gonna say, yeah, if we have broader questions about Power BI, um, we'll save those for the last 15. Yeah, um, yeah, if there's that, anything specific about this one then. I guess that is definitely a good idea. So go on, please. Okay, perfect. Last one. This is one of my favorite ones that actually was super popular. Um, shout out to Adam. Um, again, he, he managed to give me a uh, first mention um, on this one on one of his kind of cube uh, weekly roundups. But uh, again, I, I had a client scenario where they, they in a mock-up they had for a report, they had a very specific visual that they wanted built. And they wanted essentially a card that had a value some kind of a status bar that was either red and gr or green, depending on if data is up or data is down. Just very simple indicator, uh, title, and then details. And you know, I ended up figuring out and uh, trying to figure out a few different ways to uh, to accomplish this, um, and also with as few visuals as possible. So my initial version of this looks identical, but it's actually three different visuals. Um, in here, I'm just going to show you like what I started with and what I improved. So I put this over here. Zoom in a little bit. Go to my selection pane. Getting like eight frames a second right now of uh, refresh. This is great. Uh, there we go. All right, and this is my completed card at the top. There it is. Three different visuals. So I really have a top value piece. I have this clever thing here that I'll walk th um, through in a minute. This little line that's kind of in the middle that's actually my status bar and then my completed thing at the bottom. Um, and I'm sure Reza will agree, like the, the issue though in Power BI uh, is the number of visuals that you publish to the web, um, if you have too many, regardless of how small or fast your model is, the actual time it takes to load the page can drastically be impacted. Because unfortunately, um, browsers are single threaded. So it, it's not loading eight visuals in tandem, it's loading each visual one at a time um, in a single thread process. So you, whenever possible, it's good to minimize the number of visuals. And if I have eight of these cards, each comprising of three different visuals to make it, sure, it's gonna work, but it, you know, it's gonna start getting an impact. So um, I managed to get it from three down to two. So let me show you what essentially looks like the same visual, but with one less requirement to have it um, in the middle there. So this one over here instead, that, let me zoom back in, that is only two visuals. I have my thing up here at the top and I have my completed. So let me go ahead and just ungroup these and kind of show you the, the tricks to this. There you go. So what this is, you'll actually, you'll see what this is in a second when I, um, there we go. So technically what this is, is a button. This is a button where I took the fill and I put some conditional formatting in there to change from red or blue, or sorry, red or green. Um, and all I did is I made it made the uh, the you know essentially the actual button itself the size of the button small enough that it's a thin sliver of a 
a uh, little, little bar there at the bottom to create that status bar. Um, and then I just turned on the title. And the way I ended up figuring this out um, is you know, the title itself, I was able to get a numerical value in there. Um, and there's a couple of tricks for this. So I want to start kind of from the top down. So the title itself um, is a measure that's being returned in there. However, there is a limit to what value you can put into a title. So they actually have to be formatted as text. I can't just put a number or sorry, a measure that is returning a numerical or a date value into a title um, dynamically. It has to actually be um, formatted as text. So the measure in here, come on, there we go. And let me actually just look for it. Let me just double check what that name is. So I look at the right measure. Mm -hmm. Completed amount. Okay. Make it a little bit bigger. There we are. So all I did is just take the actual completed amount and I wrapped it in a format. So a format will convert it to text and it allows it to show at the top. Um, I did a bunch of performance testing between the two. This still runs about 45% faster as far as rendering time. So the the impact of just formatting that into text um, was a couple of milliseconds. It basically was a non-starter. There was there was no performance impact from that, but reducing the visuals from three to two caused that. Um, previously, I had to have three visuals because I didn't really think to use the title to display the, the actual value itself. Um, so that's why I had a second single value card at the top, the bar in the middle, and then a formatted single value card at the bottom all sandwiched together. This way, I reduced my visuals by one, I've you know, basically hacked the value into the title. So the title itself is displaying the value with that tiny sliver of a button below it. So a really, really unique way to use a button that, you know, again, it's like extremely out of the box, uh, not out of the box for the, the way to use this, but it works really well. Uh, and the bottom one is, is a pretty simple single value card. There we go. Let me show the, yeah, it's completed text. And all this is, is a you know title just standard title on there, and then a concatenated list with a bunch of variables and everything else to give it a formatted, you know, pretty exported look in there. Um, and the goal of this isn't to explain all of the, the parts of the DAX. It's just a few variables to, you know, basically have the percentage formatted, the target, um, a couple of um, ASCII arrows that go up or down depending on what, what the value is. And, you know, the result itself is just a concatenation of those um, that's just included right there. But it just, you know, it basically prints very, very well and creates a very clean output. Um, for the requirement that they had for this. But the, the end result is an extremely unique looking visual that's 100% using native visualizations and things that are out of the box and clever ways to use them, but nothing that's really gonna have any breaking changes down the road um, because it's all appropriate um, format settings that are designed to be used for those. Um, just very clever um, you know, solutions with it. Um, at that point, um, again, like this will probably be the last one that I talk about, but I will now you know, leave this open to questions for anything specific on this. Um, and then once I answer those, I'll have a couple of links to throw up and then we'll go into an open questions session with myself and Reza. Great, sure. Uh, thank you. This was uh, definitely great. I, I believe everyone was enjoying the, uh, the arts of visualizations you've been showing. Uh, we have questions, but not questions related to this. So do you want to go on with another um, like demo or you would like to take like these questions? I'll go ahead and use the last couple of minutes, I'd say, to, to throw up some links and other, and other things for individuals, uh, for resources, and then we can go into just general questions. Okay, yep, sure. <clears throat> Perfect. See if that actually spins up. There we are. Yeah, so um, general questions, your general links that we have here, um, I'll also you know, pass these on to Reza so he can include these in any um, links as well for the web webinar, um, but the you know the short PDF that I had is available um, online at my website at the top there, as well as the uh, links for you know the types of work that I do as far as consulting and training. Um, I also have a significant number of files and templates that I sell related to Power BI. Um, and what I'd li I you know like to do just kind of as a um, uh, you know, a thank you for everybody who just you know just taking an hour out of their day to, to attend some of this stuff. Is I, I you know give everybody anybody who attends a discount code. So um, that code down there of Radicad uh, April 2020 um, that will uh, basically give you 30% off anything on the website uh, for 30 days. So you guys are welcome to use that. Um, I will also say that every video that I've every presentation that I've done uh, tonight um, is, is 
associated with a YouTube video that I have on my YouTube channel, including a file you can download for these. So there's a lot of content you can go and you can get copies of everything that I've shown so far. Uh, plus all of those things that I didn't get a chance to cover also have YouTube videos as well. So I'd encourage you to go there. I released a, a video every Tuesday on YouTube, uh, which has a, you know, uh, tons of cool stuff, five to 10 minute videos on latest features, techniques, DAX, data modeling, Power Query, uh, you know, Power BI service things, premium, et cetera. So um, lots of good content on there. And I just posted my 100th video. Uh, so there's a, a lot of content you can go consume from that. Um, and for those, like I said, who had questions that were not directly related, related to the topics I was presenting on, but you have other questions, um, absolutely feel free to email to message me on LinkedIn and I'll answer the questions there. Uh, the only other thing I'll mention is the, uh, the other thing that I like to just throw out for people is um, I, I basically now uh, days auction off a or raffle off an hour of consulting where you guys can just pick my brain on whatever you want related to Power BI, design, aesthetics. If you have a DAX problem you want me to help you with and, and solve that. Um, so basically, if you go to this link, um, it just uh, signs you up for the blog. If you want to cancel it, you're welcome to at any time. Um, and basically, in exchange for just you know signing up at least temporarily. Uh, you guys will get thrown into kind of a hat and then a name will get picked out and um, I'll email somebody um, in response to that and, um, you know, set up a time to, you know, have an hour call for you to um, talk shop with me. I'll leave that up for a minute and then I think we can start answering the questions and, you know, give it like a minute or so and you can switch to whatever screen you need to res. Great, definitely. Uh, awesome presentation. Thank you, Reed. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I'll, sh uh, I'll share these links that you put there uh, at the bottom of this uh, video. This will become a video. Uh, some questions was that, is it recorded? Yeah, it is recorded. It will be accessible through the same URL exactly. Uh, and I will, uh, I will paste these links um, that uh, Reed mentioned at the description part of that uh, video. Um, right, uh, so we have a few questions, not let's say um, like, um, much related to this topic, but in Power BI in general, like one of the questions is, uh, there's a tool called Click. Uh, how Power BI compared to that? It's a big, big talk, know, I'm just assuming... shortly. <laughs> Click view, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I've never used Click view specifically, so I can't really compare an apples to oranges one. I just know it's an, you know, it's a competing visual visualization and modeling tool. Um, I don't know if you've used it much, Reza. Um, it, it's a visualization. Um, so like there are two versions of that. There is a click uh, sense and a click view. Uh, let me uh, switch to this view so that everyone can also see the um, see the chat. So there is a link and uh, sorry, there's a click uh, sense and a click view. Uh, not sure if, oh, yep, okay. Uh, click sense and click view. Now, click view is more like traditional BI tools, something like SQL Server um, tools and things like that. If you can share, uh, unshare your screen, I guess we will see your camera read. Um, yeah. Um, so that's that's one thing. Another thing is click sense, which is more like Power BI, like a visualization tool. It has a little bit of uh, like. Um, data transformation and things like that, not as rich as Power Query. Uh, and the data modeling is definitely not as rich as the uh, DAX expressions yep. and the in-memory technology that we have. So it is definitely a BI tool. Some companies are using it. It has, though, some limitations. Okay. Yeah, agreed. Right. Um, what other questions we have? So one more question here is that, uh, what is the usage of merging tables if we have the concept of relationship in the model? I'm just trying to like, think of this. So it's, <laughs> what, what's the use of merging tables if we yeah, have a relationship? Like, I guess the question is something like that, that let's say if I have product table and product category table, I can merge them, yeah. bring it into the model, or I can just bring it into the model and create a relationship. What is like the difference? Probably, I think this Great is a question. Good. So um, that's one of those that I actually just like it was years ago that I discovered this through one of Marco Russo's uh, videos um, you know, on, on DAX and just you know, performance. But there is a performance cast for performance cost for each relationship that has to be jumped from your fact table to your dimension table. So if your data that you're trying to grab is four tables away, you know, your fact dimension table one, two, three, so like let's say your sales to product to product subcategory to product category that that will have a performance impact versus 
um, normalizing your data down and creating a master product table. And like, yeah, you're going to get a tiny amount of duplication. You know, you're, you have five product categories, but 5,000 rows of the product table. But the compression algorithm in, um, in the Veritapak engine, when you bring it in, is still going to compress that column down. And, you know, you might add a tiny bit of file size, but it's going to be insignificant compared to the performance increase that you get. So the general recommendation, at least yeah, that I've, um, I try to practice and recommend is you want as few relationships between your fact tables and your dimension tables as possible. So um, basic merges were like, you know, all three products into a single products master um, is usually, uh, good, would, I would say, it's good modeling practices. Great, that was a good, definitely good response. So not combine everything together in one big fact, fat, <laughs> fat fact table, uh, but not like keep every table separate as well. You, you need to find that good niche, which is what we call it like a star schema data warehouse design. Yep. Um, okay, there are some like, n not a question, but there are some discussions about the discount code is really good. And uh, like the method you used for formatting uh, of the titles uh, are really fantastic. Uh, saying thank you and uh, things like that. Joined from India, Germany, Pakistan, Chile, lots of different places. And we have also used, I guess, from Denmark, Copenhagen. Uh, nice. So I guess that wraps up the uh, the session that we have. Anything else you want to say uh, at the end of the session? I don't think so. Other than just, uh, again, thanks everyone for um, for attending. Um, and again, like, I, I encourage uh, people to to reach out and um, and ask questions as much as needed. I know that's how I learned um, starting out is through consuming po uh, blog posts, videos, and um, forum questions. So I try to, you know, pay it forward and um, help out as much as I can for for basic questions. Just, you know, don't email me five, parag five paragraphs of a, <laughs> a really specific question. They'll take an hour. As much as short answer questions um, are are very easy to answer, uh, and you know, th those are the ones that will probably get responded to the quickest. Great. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, these are contact information of Reed as well. You can see it here and I'll paste it in the description down below. And uh, thank you very much to be our first guest. Uh, ho we hopefully have you sometimes <laughs> in the future for another session as well. Uh, and yep. good luck with uh, your Power BI adventure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Bye.